<laughs> Welcome back to But Why Though the Podcast, where we talk about the things in pop culture that matter and ask the question, but why though? Today's episode, we are talking about everybody's favorite teacher and probably the only reason you paid attention in science class, Bill Nye the Science Guy. And as always, I am your host, Kate, and I'm here with Adrian. Hey, how's it going? And introducing our brand spanking new host and our personal science guy, Matt. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for accepting. Um, so a little bit about him. I will tell you what I know, which as my significant other, I guess I should know a lot. Um, he's been behind the scenes of the podcast for a while now, running the budget, running the numbers, and now he's coming to the forefront to impart his science wisdom. Uh, you want to tell everybody why you're our science guy and what types of pop culture you're interested in? Well, I'm the science guy because I have a master's degree in biology from Texas State University with the focus in plants, or known as botany. So you're uh, Matt the botanist guy? Yes. Okay. There we go. <laughs> and I guess my... Uh, I enjoy video games probably the most and other pop culture things. I enjoy some comics, mainly video games probably for the most part. I do enjoy going to our cons as I was on the DreamHack one, obviously, from oh, last week. Yeah, I probably should have let you guys know that you've heard him before. And if you haven't, go back and listen to that. We talked about some pretty cool things. Video games and plants. That's Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt the plant guy. Matt the plant guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's your title. Okay. <laughs> He's Matt Damon. So as, <laughs> so as always, uh, we're going to start this off with a question. Just to find out where everybody is in this little phenomenon we know as Bill Nye the Science Guy. So guys, what is your earliest Bill Nye memory? And why do you think he's important outside the kids' classroom? Uh, Adrian, you start. Uh, I think as most people in our age group... It was in science class. Um, I think the most the episode that stands out to be the most and which really got me thinking about science was the one where he does like the scale model of how far away the planets are with like the sun being ah. one meter. And then he goes like... I actually watched that video in grad school. So it's definitely <laughs> not just for... Yeah, so that, that's when I was like, whoa, space is super big. And, and I think, you know, that's probably like my earliest memory in like my favorite episode because it really blew my mind for science and for why he's so important outside of the classroom. I think it's just what his show does. Like, get, like, like I said, it got me interested in science and learning more about how big space is and molecules and like all this other stuff that I don't think I would have been nearly as interested in if this quirky white guy wasn't, you know, <laughs> putting it to me in terms that I understood as a kid. Um, and, I, and, I, and I guess grad school, too. <laughs> I guess for Matt. Um, hey, hey, all I know is they rolled in the TV. I wasn't sure what was happening. I thought I was in grad school. And the next thing I know, we're watching Bill and I, the science guy. Did you start having flashbacks from, like, middle school? Just generally inspiring people to be interested in science, I think, is what kids need, especially this day and age. you got to be better in science. Let's go to Mars. I I yeah, can, there is a whole episode about that in his new show, so which we'll yeah. talk about a little later. Yes. Uh, I guess for me, I mean, obviously, uh, I saw him plenty of times in the classroom, whether it be in middle <laughs> school, high school, and even grad school. <laughs> yeah, it was just a good part. He, I guess just the enthusiasm that he brought towards science and trying to get everybody involved. Obviously, he had a lot of kids on the show, which I thought was great because you're like, oh, people my age or whatever can do this and can understand this as well. And I guess moving on towards the outside of the classroom, I mean, he's done, a, I guess, a lot of things that obviously we'll discuss, whether it be debating people, just giving facts. He has a new show. He's kind of moved into, I guess, the political yeah. spectrum. But what about for you? Like, why do oh. you personally think he's important? Well, I think, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was like, <laughs> why is he important? That's why. <laughs> but uh, We're going to talk about why in yeah, the rest yeah. of the show. <laughs> well, for me, I mean, for outside the classroom, I guess even for that, for watching somebody I guess because he turned from just a TV personality talking about science to where he's now promoting science and trying to even dictate, not necessarily dictate, but promote like changes in, I guess, the world and how people are educated and knowledge, whether it be, as I said earlier, in the political spectrum now. I guess as yeah. we grew up, he kind of grew up with us. 
Yeah. That's deep. I, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get some snaps for that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I actually I completely agree there. Um, I'm going to start with why I think he's important. I think he's important because he moved from speaking about just about science to using his celebrity and his like nostalgic place in all of our hearts to talk about like broader social issues. Um, so he's talked about stuff on like poverty and women's rights and uh, women's education and all these types of things. And he didn't really have to do that. And yet he, he used his platform to actually start trying to, uh, to bring, to bring change. And even outside of his show, like he's become a really big, uh, influencers with promoting STEM for students at all grade levels. So everybody thinks about STEM in the kids' classroom. So like elementary school, maybe early middle school. But by the time you're in high school, a lot of the times people forget forget about you. When And for him, it's really making sure everybody can get involved in science no matter what age you are. Um, and for me, like my earliest science guy memory was like we reenacted almost – Every single experiment he did in the shows that we had watched, we reenacted those experiments in some way. So by watching Bill Nye the Science Guy as a kid in in school, it made me actually engage with the science and not just read about it and not just hear somebody tell me. Like my teachers used it as a tool to actually get my hands on it. And I may not be a scientist like Matt now, but I was like an AP physics and stuff like that in high school. I have since lost that math knowledge, and that is why I'm not the numbers person here. But uh, a lot of that is just because I like the hands-on stuff, and he kind of gave us a template for that. So, interesting question, I guess, because I really don't know exactly who came first. But I know he's really good friends with Neil deGrasse Tyson. So when it came to, like, I guess, as you said, putting himself, like, using his popularity in the state to promote science, did he, like, I know he, he joined forces. Did he, like, help? They wonder twin. Yeah, I mean, did they wonder twin together? Did he help promote? Does anybody happen to know whether he helped I'm... promote Neil to come out farther? Because so... like, he's always been avid, but he's mainly an author and he ran a museum. But now yeah. you see him everywhere as well. Well, I think it was more Neil helping Bill, just because I know that Neil got a position at the Planetary Society um, after their interactions together and stuff like that. But I also think that Bill has been more on the, so like engaged with the social issues more so than say just the pure science of things. Whereas Neil has really worked to push pure science. And so I think they've kind of been in different realms acting, but I, I, I don't know about this. You can add us and let us know if I'm getting this right or wrong, but I think Neil came first. And I think Neil just really took off when he redid Carl Sagan's The Cosmos, and then Bill kind of stepped into the co the light. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I just wasn't sure, because I needed yeah. to kind of both platform together, and so I wasn't 100%. By the way, if you do not know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is, look up his picture. He looks just like Adrian. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If Adrian <laughs> aged, like 20 years. I'll take But anyways, it. moving on. <laughs> so Adrian's first cosplay. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> oh, Matt, that means Matt needs to be Bill now. Yeah. You can be the old it, white Matt. guy. We'll wonder, I will we'll only be Brian Cox. That's <laughs> it. We understand this. <laughs> we'll have more science episodes, I promise. But I think this question perfectly segues us into Bill Nye's history since kind of you can see his kind of rise and stuff. Um, so let's start off where we always start off with the very early history. So, born on November 27, 19, uh, 1955, Bill Nye grew up in Washington, D.C. After graduating from Cornell University, he moved to Seattle to work as a mechanical engineer for Boeing and eventually became a comedy show writer and performer. Nye went on to become the face of Bill Nye the Science Guy, an award-winning educational program that taught science to preteens, also a successful author. He remains a popular public fi figure and vocal member of the science community. Nye also continued to advocate for science, becoming the CEO of the Planetary Society and helping develop sundials for the Mars Exploration Rover missions. Nye has written multiple best-selling books on science, including Undeniable Evolution of Science and Creation. And I will say this, we just read, or we just watched the Bill Nye Reads mean tweets, and somebody's mean tweets was, I will always hate you because you did not, you wrote a book called Undeniable and did not spell it undeniable with NYE in the middle of it. So 
<laughs> um, so he wrote that in 2014, and then Unstoppable, Harnessing Science to Change the World in 2015, as well as uh, he's also a children's author, and he is in a video game called Bill Nye the Science Guy, Stop the Rock. Um, Nye is also a fellow of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, a U.S. nonprofit scientific and educational organization whose aim is to promote scientific inquiry, critical investigation, and the use of reason in examining controversial and extraordinary claims. Interviewed by John Rael for the Independent Investigation Group, IIG, Nye stated that his concern right now is scientific illiteracy. Uh, the public don't have enough rudimentary knowledge of the universe to evaluate claims. So if we take this and move into what we most know him for, which is what we've been talking about, is Bill Nye the Science Guy. And this was a persona he created for his PBS KCTS TV TV show that was produced in Seattle. And now it's just kind of become him. Like, I don't think anybody really associates him without the science guy at the end of his name. I don't know if you guys do, um, because I know there is a British actor named Bill Nye. (laughs) <laughs> so, but I think it's spelled N-I-G-H or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in this show, which we all mentioned, we're all familiar with, it was an educational television program that aired from September 10th, um, 1993 to June 20th, 1998. He hosted the show and it aimed to teach science to, pre- to a preteen audience. Each And each of the show's 100 episodes focused on a specific topic. The show is often used in schools as an educational tool, um, and this spans from, I believe, probably the about fifth grade to obviously grad school. <laughs> that still blows my mind. Every time, like, you bring up grad school, like, man, you watched Bill Nye in grad school. I it was amazing. There. We also watched The Cosmos. It was <laughs> Which a very, one? It was a very inter- the new one actually. Actually, both of them. Will tell you the truth, but mainly the new one was. Yeah. <laughs> That works. With the with the other part of the Wonder Twins. Yes. <laughs> which I don't think diminishes either of them. Because, like, on Neil's podcast, Star Talk, which you should totally listen to, like, Bill Nye has an, his entire spinoff from that now. Um, but, yeah, get to that later. Um, over its five-year run, the show won 19 Emmy Awards. Nye personally received seven of the Emmys for writing, performing, and producing. Something I also noticed when I rewatched, because it's it's on Netflix until May 15th, so by the time this is up, you will not be able to watch it. So I'm sorry for rubbing some salt in that wound. It's it's all over YouTube. It's been out for so long. If you want to catch catch some episodes, you can can catch them on YouTube. If you they find only... some from 1998, then it's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they only had they only had 31 episodes on on Netflix too, so obviously not the whole thing. Netflix is very bad at giving stuff that has over 100 episodes. This is true. Is that a, a Mystery Science Theater 3000 wound right there? There's 199 or 197 <laughs> episodes of that. Put 10. <laughs> Salty. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> anyway. One of the things I really noticed here, and this is something that goes into not only his uh, the work that he's done in the social space, but also what he's done with his Bill Nye Saves the World show on Netflix, is a lot of the students and people that he brings in for um, Bill Nye the Science Guy are people of color. Um, and it's it's not, you're not watching the same people over and over again. Like, you're not watching a whole bunch of the same person, I guess. Like, they don't all look like Bill Nye is what I'm trying to say. Which is really, it, it's a really good tool for teaching children. Mostly because a lot of the psychology and representation has shown that when when students can see themselves in that position, they're more apt to do stuff. And this is why students learn better when they can actually perform a task versus just hearing it or seeing it project-based and learning this goes into that what project-based learning get with the times america oh. yeah there we go. more project based so learning. Weird why we watch this show and they do all these cool little projects and i'm like why did we do none of those in like science class yeah in, in might be like or... my my selfish ploy <laughs> who works in the high school but project-based learning is where it's at that's what we need to start going to stop testing yeah, kids so much let them do some some projects as long as it's not group project learning we'll be okay <laughs> so the one person with the three dead weights learning yes <laughs> you'll learn that in grad school yeah. or high school yeah. 
<laughs> or the real world. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> but yeah, so Bill Nye the Science Guy has always been aware of these things. And I personally, on my rewatch of it, that's what I saw. Um, obviously, there's some really cheesy things there. But I think he gets a point across. And I remember being the age that it was targeted to and learning from it. Um, do you guys have any input on the TV show? Uh, I think it's, I mean, I haven't, I've rewatched a couple episodes because my brother was watching it the other the other day, the, the old show, of course. And I don't know how well it would age if I went back and watched it now because I'm obviously not their target demographic again. I think it would just be like more nostalgia if I went back and watched it and sat through it. I think it's a great tool if you want to explain something like very quickly, like the the planet episode. I just showed that to Stefani like five seconds ago to you know to show her how big space is in terms you know that's really easy to comprehend because space is a really th- hard thing to comprehend. So it's really easy in that sense. But as like a show itself, like if you put that on TV now, I don't know how well it would do just because it's kind of dated and kind of like overly quirky. Yeah, and I think, like, Matt, don't you have, like, a rule that you don't watch the science documentaries yeah, after a certain time? Yeah, that's what I was about time? to chime in and say, like, unfortunately, watching it now, I'm like, most of the science is outdated. Usually yeah. five, even, like, if you go back to 1998, I mean, I'm pretty sure almost 80% of that stuff's probably, I mean, obviously not, not the general fact stuff, but quite a bit of it's probably really outdated. And I think I'm going to go ahead and incorporate a but why, though, here instead of saving it for the end because it's actually one of the things that they've done with the show in some of its and so they've actually modified some of the old episodes to reflect changing theories and thoughts and one of the main ones that got a lot of hype and a lot of controversy was that they removed um it was a probably it was an episode on probability and they removed the idea of just two uh chromosome variations and they did that because of the social progression of understanding gender and sexuality and all these things but they also did it because the more science that they had to break uh, to back up the fact of chromosomes was that chromosome variation happened a lot more frequently. So they went ahead and took that out and replaced it with something more appropriate for proving a 50-50 probability. Um, Did they not just use Mendel's? I did not watch that episode. (laughs) Well, I mean, if you're wondering about the 50-50 probability and you're just trying to look at genetic probability, you might as well just use Mendel's if you had a problem with it. Well, I know that the clip that they were talking about, it was was a girl with an X magnet and a Y magnet talking about chromosomes. (laughs) So (laughs) that probably doesn't hold up so well, like, even if... (laughs) Throw some peas. But I, so I think that like this idea that science changes is something that Bill Nye has been really, really open about. And he's changed it with a lot of his own stances, too. It's this idea that the facts are facts, but you have to leave room to understand that if you're presented with new evidence that something is different, that you should address that evidence, inquire about it, prove it, and then accept it. Um, you know, which like I think science. Is a, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How it should be. <laughs> and so I think that that presents a really good model for people going forward. And he's also really open about some of the stuff that he, like, he doesn't hide the fact that he was anti something and now he's for something. And he, and I think that that's a really important thing to put forward. Um, Cause it shows that like people can be wrong and then just address it and, you know, move on with the times. So I think he also does a good job. I'm sure we might talk about this more in depth later, but that he was an engineer and not an actual scientist. So yes. he'd like to say, I'm not an expert in this, but from my own personal research or from people who are actually experts in this field, this is what I'm presenting you. Yeah. And I think too, I also think like it's good that he's done that now. Cause I don't think it was too much of an issue with like the show. Cause he did like very base facts yeah. with Bill Nye, the science guy, which I mean, I could, I could teach, like high school math and be not high school math probably middle school math and be fine not high school math but middle school middle school okay i could do middle school anyway (laughs) moving right along i'm rethinking your host position okay (laughs) no i'm not i love you i promise Uh also for those of you who don't know out there he is also my significant other and he was on the dream hack episode there you go it's all love but Moving on into the 2000s, he was also a technical expert on a show that I was really obsessed with called BattleBots. 
And this was in 2000 to 2002. And this was where people designed and created robots and they made them fight each other in an arena style combat tournament. Um, so he was a technical expert on that for two seasons. And then in 2004, 2005, he did 100 Great Discoveries. Um, where he hosted a series that highlighted the greatest scientific discoveries of all time from the earliest time to present day. And it featured episodes on evolution, earth, science, sciences, medicine, physics, astronomy, chemistry, genetics, and biology. Beyond that, he also tried to do a show called The Eyes of Nye. And the reason this is important is because it only got one season, but this was pretty much what I'm going to call a mind baby for his Netflix show, Bill Nye Saves the World. And the reason I say that is because it was aimed at an older audience and it tackled more controversial science subject matter, such as genetically modified food or GMOs. Uh, global warming, and race. However, shifting creative concepts in fighting among executives and disputes over money with Seattle Producing Station kept it from getting launched on time, and it also made it to where it was plagued with other problems. And PBS declined to distribute the ISO 9 and it ended up having to get picked up uh, by American public television. And this was because they wanted a more Nova style show, but Bill Nye still wanted to be quirky. He still wanted to be Bill Nye. And the funny thing is he actually blames the fact, he blames its failure on the fact that he wore a straight tie instead of his bow tie. Jesus. Because <laughs> he seems says legit. it wasn't him. <laughs> Um, beyond that, he's also had a whole bunch of guest appearances on like America's Smartest Model, The Big Bang Theory, Inside Amy Shooter, and he also was a professor in the show Numbers, and the the idea for the show Numbers actually came from one of his lectures he gave to children on math, um, and math being the center of everything. So that's pretty cool, and I think my favorite cameo was his Dancing with the Stars routines, and his career on Dancing with the Stars ended too soon. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. One of his AMAs he did a couple of years ago, one of the questions that was asked was, uh, like, what's your favorite subject other than science? And he said swing dancing. So, <laughs> Well, like, it just sucked because he got hurt, and so he couldn't do perfectly, so he got lower scores. But if you look at his face when he was dancing with his partner, like, he was really into what he was doing, and I don't think he was terrible. Like, he could have sol- solidly, solidly made it to, like, number seven or six. But that's just me, and... I believe that's how he does everything. <laughs> they tell him to do something, he's going to do it with the most enthusiasm ever. We need more Bill Nye's in the world. <laughs> no, maybe that might get exhausting. We need some more <laughs> Bill Nye's in the world. <laughs> Too many bow ties. <laughs> um, so this is what leads us into, I think, something we'll spend a little bit more time on. Um, Because it just came out, which makes it the most relevant thing. And it is Bill Nye Saves the World. And I want to point out that this title, Bill Nye Saves the World, has been at the core of everything that he does. Saving the World has been Bill Nye's mission since he started his children's television show. And he believes that he can do that by imparting knowledge on people. And actually talking about things and trying to educate as well as just throw the facts out there. So... Bill Nye Saves the World is on Netflix right now. Go watch it. It's an American political television show. That's how it's categorized, not a science education show. So that's your first thing. And it focuses on science and investigates its relationship with politics, popular culture, and society. This first season explores topics such as climate change, alternative medicine, and video games from a scientific point of view, while also refuting myths and anti-scientific claims. That the TV show is hosted by Nye, five correspondents assist the presentation of the show. These include fashion model Carly Kloss, science YouTuber and educator Derek Mueller, and I hate that the Wikipedia had that because that guy actually has a PhD in physics, so I'm going to put that front and center. Uh, comedian um, Nazine Hussein, uh, comedian and writer Joanna Hausman, and TV host and producer Emily Calandrelli. And I also want to put that she has a degree from MIT in engineering. So I also really hate that Wikipedia put that on there. Um, and all these like, don't matter. It just like doesn't make any. Uh, it like having you just said you know the multiple PhDs people and the first episode features designer. 
why? Yeah, yeah. Why even put designer anywhere close to this thing that has and all of these intellectuals? It was... And it's like, oh, okay, sorry. And that's it, no, it's fine. We'll come around to this right after I finish this line. Okay. So the show also features guest appearances from Zach Braff, designer with two eyes, Donald Faison, Rachel Bloom, Gus Sarola, Jeff uh, Jeff Ramsey, Joel McHale, Will Whedon, Martin Starr, Jonah May, Steve Aoki, and Tim Gunn. Steve Aoki in a lab coat. Like, I'm with him. He was so lost. Thing. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I understand the ire about having designer and Steve Aoki and even Joel McHale on these things. But because I was actually really frustrated when I saw that first episode, I didn't even know who designer was. But at the same time, I think the fact that he did get big names involved with it is because he's trying to be like other. And it's not a variety show, but like television talk shows now, like The Daily Show and all these things where they bring in a whole bunch of people and they bring in a whole bunch of famous people trying to get others involved and to broaden the audience base and I also think, because, like, Matt knew who Designer was. I did not know who Designer was. <laughs> but, like, I think it really focuses on the fact. And I think, because uh, I was frustrated until I started reading about what he personally does. And he personally tries to reach into communities and encourage people who you may not think want to be involved in STEM to get involved with STEM. And so I think by including people from different genres and different backgrounds he's able to do that but it might be lost on the fact that he's no longer educating children he's he's educating yeah and that's my big thing for the show because when you're looking at bill nye the science guy like that's definitely you know aimed at a specific target audience and this show for me when i'm when i'm watching i'm like are you trying to capture some of like the the bill nye magic and explain stuff very simply it at like a you know adolescence thing but then you're bringing in designer and steve aoki but are, are those same people who are really really into them and would watch them for them do they really care about the issues that are going on it just seems like it just seems a little all over the place but you said it gets better later on maybe i just need to it push does get better. It. but those first couple and... episodes i'm just like well i mean i don't want to see designer go to different coffee shops to tell me about global warming like i don't need that like just, just honestly, tell me like... about some facts please I had that exact same reaction with Carly Kloss. I was like, really? You have a supermodel? You couldn't bring on like a freaking like female scientist? Like why Why is Carly Kloss on here? Hey, this she's, is, she's no. tall. <laughs> and she's But pretty. at the same time, I think it's also pointing out, <laughs> yes, Adrian, she is pretty. And I think it's pointing out that pretty women can be into science too. And I think it's just pointing out that like you don't have to be a certain type to be into science. And... I'm just trying to think about, like, think of all the other people we know who watch Bill Nye. Like, they may not tune into this series on Netflix for learning, but may just be tuning in for nostalgic purposes. Like, oh, I watched that guy in school. I'm going to turn this on. And, you know, maybe something that they may connect with is designer or Carly Claus. I don't know. I guess you guys kind of hit on it, but I guess could by bringing in, I guess, different people from like designer and Steve Aoki that have nothing to do with science. Is it showing that people that do things that are absolutely nothing with science can now be involved? That is true. I guess that would make sense if Steve Aoki didn't look so lost and like he had no <laughs> well, idea what he was well, doing. Well, I know there. that, but it, I meant like some of the other people, even like, the supermodel. Like, I don't I'm know a super what I'm fashion doing. model. But <laughs> I still have an opinion about science, and this should matter to me, despite what yeah. I do has nothing to do with science. That is true. That is a really valid point. And in Steve Aoki's defense, I do think he looks lost like 95% <laughs> of the time that I see him. I kind of have to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I would say, Adrian, watch deeper in, and I think they really, even with Carly Claus. <laughs> I think they really tease it out more. Um, but I also think the way the promotion was for a lot of the people wasn't that great. Like Joanna, like um, Emily Calandrelli and Derek Mueller, you wouldn't know that yeah. they have degrees from prestigious No, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, the first episode you give me is Carly Kloss, and I and Stefani recognized her immediately as like, a, uh, she was like, man, that, that, she, she must be a model. So for, from then on, when you're bringing on all these other people, like I don't know those people. And you're bringing in comedians – I think all these people are just here to be funny. I didn't know any of them actually had legit degrees. 
yeah. and the audience thing. Like, why why do they have the audience? It feels like I'm watching like Tosh Point or something sometimes. Yeah, the audience like, is a forced. little. The audience is weird. Like yeah. it's so the unnecessary. Is pretty weird. If they should, if they yeah, would have had an audience, they should have had like little kids losing their minds, like legitimately like losing their minds and not forcing laughter to laugh at his cringy and, jokes. But so like I kind of think that like they don't force the laughter just because some of the jokes are bad and nobody laughs. The first and he episode, just, like, he's runs like, with it. basically setting up an experiment, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, Bill Nye. I'm well, like, he's I'm just, just saying, moving like, a beaker. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's Bill Nye, Adrian. He's Bill Nye. They're watching him in grad school. This is true. This but, is true. <laughs> but I think it does get better because, I mean, we're critiquing this show before I finished talking about it. But still, like, it does get better because he's totally old man Bill Nye now, and some of the stuff that he's doing, he totally did in the Science Guy series. But now, because we're older and he's older, it seems a little bit weirder than it did back then. I think it's just you. I didn't mind. He's Bill Nye. He does what he wants. He don't even care. <laughs> yeah, he still wears he's a tell tie. this joke. Yeah. He's going to tell a joke, it may hit, it may miss, but he's going to be excited to do it, and he's going to laugh anyways. And they did include that in there. Like, there are a lot of parts where he says a joke, and, like, people don't laugh, and he's like, that's fine. And then he just, like, moves on. <laughs> um, okay, so back into the meat of the show. So the way it works is he does an introductory experiment, then he has a correspondent, then he has a panel, then he has, like, a little shtick, and usually, in some of them he has a bill needs a minute, and in those Bill Needs a Minute, he kind of goes off on his little rants like, oh, my God, people, pay attention to this. Um, And the thing, and we already talked about celebrities. See, my show notes are all messed up now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't read more. Organic more. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so like I said, the panels. And I think the great thing with the panels is he brought in – people with diverse areas of expertise. And when I say diverse areas of expertise, is the expertise isn't just somebody who has a degree in it. It So in the GMO episode, it was um, a person in the business of making GMOs, a, a person in the business of using GMOs on their farm. So somebody who actually made the switch from non-GMO to GMO seeds. And then um, an actual uh, person who has done the researches and has compiled a whole bunch of lists and trends and that type of stuff and so he's able to kind of showcase all these things that being said he does have some comedians show up on the panels and i'm like will whedon did you really need to be on that panel could you give him that seat to somebody else <laughs> um uh, i think on the gender and sexuality episode they could have benefited from like a geneticist or a biologist on there talking instead of, of having a random saw, comedian that was the one that stuck out the most will, why will whedon was on that episode news. No, he wasn't on that no, episode. No, 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 no. no. A different episode. Oh, Sorry, I was about Will to say, Wheaton. why do you have Will Wheaton on? <laughs> no, <laughs> Shut no, up, it, it, no. We need it, to definitely like double record this because she said she wanted to kick Will Wheaton off of something. No, <laughs> I love you, Will Wheaton. Please listen to us. Be on my podcast. And <laughs> anyway, but on top of having a diverse area of expertise. To me, it seems like the show has gone out of its way to find uh, people of color and women to fill these roles as well. So it's not just your standard panel that always happens. He tries to bring in people that represent what's going on. So in the there's a there's an episode. It's the very last episode on overpopulation. And one of the main things that a lot of people have come to is that if you educate more women, we can deal with this problem. And so he doesn't bring on a whole bunch of white men to talk about women's education. He brings on, you know, people involved in the field actually doing stuff and women who are getting educated and are working with other women in family planning. And so I think the show goes out of its way to cover its bases and to be really, really inclusive and not in a way that seems like tokenism at all. Um, so I thought that was really, really great. And I think another thing that it does really well is it examines ideas of privilege and how we kind of view stuff here. And one of the main things was when he talks about vaccinations, he points out that a lot of the reason we have, an we have anti-vaccination people in the States is because I don't know anybody who had polio. My mom doesn't know anybody who had polio. But in, uh, but in India, 
they know a lot of people who had polio. So they have a very different stance towards these things. So he really tries to focus these things within their cultural context and then bring them into science. And I think that that's a really great way to handle them. Um, the critique of the show that I've noticed on some forums and even my own Facebook page is that he's not really an educator here. Um, when he talks about these ideas of climate change, IVF, overpopulation, women's rights, gender and sexuality, pseudoscience, homeopathy, and what he calls malarkey, um, he can come off as ranting and alienating to viewers who may have tuned in to learn about something instead of trying to educate them or change their minds. I mean, I'm not in the science area, so I'll throw this to you when I'm done, but like when, at least the argument that I've heard is that giving people, so if you had somebody who doesn't believe in climate change show up onto a, a show about science, where they're talking about climate change, it kind of defeats the purpose of working through scientific concepts if you have somebody who denies the science. So I I mean, I kind of don't agree that he's not educating. I think he's still throwing out the facts. Um, but I've never had to teach these types of concept concepts. And I know you've taught in a university setting. So I don't know, Matt, if you've had to, like, deal with some of this stuff. Uh, I mean, I did teach, I mean, some labs and whatnot in the university setting. Wait, wait, but wait. We didn't re- did you what? or did you not show Bill Nye when you were teaching? <laughs> I did not. We did not show uh, Bill nope, Nye. Nope, nope. No. I did show a great video on on how violent seagulls are and how they rip uh, each other apart. And now I'm terrified of birds again. Thank I would you. totally be. I might just show you this video afterwards in the show notes posts for everybody. But no. Anyways, so what we taught for the most part that I had to teach was general labs on how to general science on how to like learn how to I guess basic concepts of science like cells, you know, the different classes, classifications, how to use a microscope and other various almost like an eighth grade or like probably more of a high school level science because this was a class designed for non-majors so basically had a bunch of sociology and liberal arts a bunch of you guys in my class actually (laughs) thanks yeah (laughs) eighth grade science level (laughs) well yeah but we never really, we only had really one section where we taught evolution and we were kind of warned about it, you know, on how to go about teaching it. I taught it well the way it should be taught, I believe. I didn't really take any controversy. I never really had any blowback. I don't know if it's just because of the I guess the interest level that the students had because sometimes it is hard to teach somebody who's going for like psycho- psychology or something to like be actually interested in science when they're like I have to sit in a lab for 3 hours for something that's not part of my field. Yeah. But it's like getting you to sit in on like a cultural anthropology class. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I didn't really have any blowback. I mean, I basically we taught it. They were pretty. I think this day and age, a lot of people, especially I guess people like kids that I've realized in, or I guess students in universities, are pretty a lot more open to like you teaching them these things. When I went to my undergrad at a more I guess conservative school. In my awesome place. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> it, you saw more blowback from like people teaching science and everything else, where there's exemptions and we tried to like hide it and everything else. But as far as from my teaching perspective, I never really had any, I guess, bad perspective. But I know there's other people that I did know that faced some of these things, and they just said, "This is what we're teaching you. This is material. Here are the facts. This is what we know. Go with what you got." I guess. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess, like, from that perspective, do you like how he handled a lot of the stuff? Uh, yeah. I kind of did. I mean, I like the panels. Like I said, besides the, the um, that, uh, gender and sexuality. Gender and sexuality one where I thought there should have been a, a geneticist or a biologist, especially considering he led that show, talking about chromosomes and genes. I like the panels that he had. He had people not only from the science with that took science backgrounds that were involved in the science but also, he, I do like that he brought people that were just, like, there. Like, the farmer that you said, she may not even had an education of any some sort, but she was an expert in that field of farming. So, obviously, no matter what she did in her life, she was an expert in GMOs. Yeah. So, I like that she he brought that type of a panel. Yeah. Cause, and I think, too, like, I know, like, one of the things that's become a staple 
in these types of shows is like debating some stuff and i actually think debate happens on like the less critical issue on the less critical shows so like on the episode about esports adrian that you mentioned there's some debate going on because it's it's a woman who runs an e- uh, a gaming addiction rehabilitation center oh geez a phd who studies the psychology of gaming and a professional streamer and so there's some debate that goes on there um but it's not but you don't see that on something that's high stakes like the climate change episode yeah and i think that um, I, I, I don't know i, I i'm not a showrunner i i don't know what, what the <laughs> correct way to do this is but like matt was saying a lot of the people and obviously not everybody but people in our age group or our age range don't really have a problem with a lot of these issues and to see him to see bill nye that is like tell me oh you know climate change is a real thing like yeah i know i i I know like you don't have to tell me like i understand that so like watching the episode like oh yes i yeah we do we do need to do something about this you're right bill but like a lot of it's just him kind of like preaching to the choir like you said so it just leads me to think like what's the target audience if you're just going to preach and not educate or like not have in depth debate, you know who are who are you trying to market it to? Because a lot of it, I feel like I'm gonna go through the rest of the episodes. And I'm like, oh yeah, all of this makes sense to me, and then I'm not yeah. gonna have, I, I'm not gonna be better for watching it. Unlike when I watched Bill Nye the Science Guy and I actually learned stuff and like it changed my perspective on things. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that is true. I the one thing I will say is I think some of the episodes. So I think on the other side of that. I think we're more open to these broader things. So like climate change, poverty, overpopulation. But at the same time, the person who supports climate change might not be behind vaccines um, in our age group or maybe against GMOs. So I think maybe like that's why the panel seems so different on these things. Possibly. I mean, it I happens know. all the time. I haven't figured it out, but yeah, there are times where you do the GMO, anti-vaccine, and climate change, and people will believe two out of the three. And it's like, that's not the way science works. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess with the educating part, I did, I mean, he did kind of like seem like he was ranting on. I mean, I kind of enjoyed it, but I guess it's kind of like, I was kind of like you, I understood a lot of it, and I pretty much knew quite a bit of it already. Well, if you didn't, I'd be worried about your science degree. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> my two science degrees make okay your two science degrees but um the um they lost, made me lost my train of thought they <laughs> make me mess up on the first episode <laughs> bum, bum, bum. But anyways like the ranting and everything i got it i knew it understand it but i guess it's kind of hard because i understood what adrian was saying where i kind of want to see more science a little bit at times like especially that gender and sexuality one that you talked about like when they brought on the cultural anthropologist i wanted to see the genetics behind it and like what they were talking about when they're talking about a spectrum of like i guess the way the chromosomes work and the variations i want to see that from a geneticist and a biological standpoint so i wanted to learn more instead of somebody i guess that did not wasn't qualified in that to tell and me. then i think they were just teaching in a different way teaching on a different topic but they weren't i think that too like he wasn't always teaching science like, I think a lot of the show, he's teaching other things and not just science. I think, Even though he leads with it, because that's where we know him from. I think he taught a lot more on, like, cultural aspects, which may be one of the reasons why it's uh, it's classified as a political show versus a science show. Well, most of the episodes started out with at least a good bit of science and, like, why he believes this. And yeah. then it turned into, I guess, to the ranting thing. But I guess... From my standpoint, I guess, because Adrian, you said, like, well, I don't agree with this, and he's preaching to me, and I understand this, but I guess what he's also trying to do is trying to get people to actually go do something about it. Yeah. Because as much as everybody seems to know this, we I drive a, a lot of problems. I drive what? an electric car. <laughs> <laughs> well. All I'm thinking about is my advisor in my, in my, uh, my graduate school program who literally sits in the middle of faculty meetings watching his house produce energy because he has solar panels. Oh, that's so cool. And everybody knows he does this and he just carries his solar panel like, I would totally do thing that. on his Wait, lap totally his, on his tablet and that's all he does. I would totally do that. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I guess just from being around scientists all day and seeing, like, I guess, not only because it's 
thing, the types of policies that are being in place and the people that are being, I guess, put in charge of science-related activities throughout, like, the country and the world and everything, I think scientists are just kind of getting tired of, like, we're, we're trying to teach people, we're giving people facts, we're giving them all this stuff, and they literally just say, oh, well, I have alternative facts, who cares? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I think it turned oh, into, yeah. like... <laughs> I think it turned into almost people scientists feeling like they have to rant. Maybe just like we start yelling stuff and maybe people will finally start listening to us because some of the topics he goes on it doesn't matter like global cha- cl- climate change and even GMOs and anti-vaccines like especially the anti-vaccines and the climate change. It doesn't matter what you believe, this stuff is still happening and will still affect and it's only going to get worse. And so unless I start yelling at people to baby, hey, pay attention, please, here are some facts, listen to them, then nothing's going to happen and eventually it'll all be detriment. And since I think we've all talked about our thoughts on the show, I think this transition perfectly, per- transitions perfectly into one of, one of the but why those and also one of his critiques. I know a lot of the people are saying, well, not only is he just an engineer, but just an engineer who worked for Boeing and made Mars dials, but just an engineer, why is he talking about some of these science issues? Or, hey, you're a TV personality, why are you getting involved in policy or trying to get involved in some of these political issues? And I think for me, the biggest but why though here is Bill Nye can do it because we all know who Bill Nye is for the most part. And we all identify him with learning and facts. And maybe if Bill Nye says it, maybe it's easier for some people to understand it. Um, and I think that really bridges into this uh, this popular science model that he's a larger part of. Um, there's a bigger push for getting science, not just in the classroom, not just on, a, I think they're interesting, but like a boring science documentary and getting people more involved with the science of sports or the science of video games or the science of Doctor Who. Like they're picking these topics so that they can make it accessible and kind of get people involved. And so I do um, diversity and inclusion training for adult learners. And one of the things that I've been learning through this process of of facilitating workshops is adult learners learn better when they feel completely engaged with the material and you tell them what to do. So I think that really speaks to what you're saying. And I think Bill Nye is the perfect guy to do this because he's been telling us what to do science-wise and how to run experiments and how to look at facts since we were in school. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I know that's one of the critiques that he gets is like, why is he speaking about all these things? I I really don't have too much to add. I I think you said (laughs) what I would have said <laughs> I, don't think it's a, I don't think basically i don't think it's a valid critique to critique him on the fact that he's an engineer because he's still a freaking engineer who worked at nasa like how are you going to discredit a dude who worked at nasa and is, and is and obsessed with sundials like how I think you're, reaching really a, you're, re, you're grasping at straws at that point basically <laughs> well i think what he also well, we didn't really talk about it i kind of want to we don't have much time but the when he went to debate he also debated ken ham in 2014 over evolution versus creationism and he's obviously an engineer but what he did to prepare for this is he went out for the like the whole three months or so beforehand and he literally spoke with evolutionary biologists people who are specialized in this field who are experts in this field and he wouldn't just like learn almost like took classes with them and on them before he went and did this so he's a person that he may be an engineer but he's also willing to go out of his way and do his own research to where i don't just sound like an engineer and have no idea what i'm talking about Yeah, I think that's really important, and I think that really hits to the other but why, though, that I've already kind of talked about, is encouraging people to seek out knowledge at all times, specifically the knowledge in sense, so science, technology, uh, engineering, and math at any time like he really when he when he talks to people about this he says to let your passion come through and make sure that when you teach and when you talk about things you don't get embarrassed by your passion but you let your passion go wild and let other people see it and be take and be pretty much consumed by it just as much as you are and i think that's why he tries to learn so much and present so much and and even when he's arguing somebody who's never gonna agree with him he tries to cover all his bases because I think he knows that everybody's looking at him. And I think he knows that if he can present something as passionately as Bill Nye does, I mean, because like you said, Bill Nye is going to do whatever you tell him to do. And he's going to do it with 150% enthusiasm. Learning from somebody who is like that 
is probably one of your best experiences. Like if you think back to your middle school, high school, college experiences, listeners, your favorite teacher was probably somebody who was highly involved in what they were teaching you and somebody who was really passionate. Um, so I think that also speaks to another but why though. He's, well, no, it's the same but why though. I'm making up a whole bunch of them. Whatever. But to keep learning. Um, that's like one of the main things. Um so just to, since we're in here already, just to touch about a little bit, we've already talked about how he's pretty much the paradigm for teaching science in the classroom. The uh, project-based learning, like Adrian was saying, uh, he's a great resource for that. Um, he also has been very vocal about adapting to facts. And that's the other but why, though. And I think the other big thing is that... He has also just become this pop culture entity. Like, there's an Urban Dictionary definition for him. (laughs) And that Urban Dictionary definition is the world's greatest scientist and the common term used to describe someone who is totally an all-around genius to do very well during academics. Examples. Trevor. Patrick, you're such a Bill Nye. Patrick, looks like you pulled a Bill Nye. Bill Nye. I'm Bill Nye. (laughs) And so I think, I don't know. I mean, I kind of don't know how to wrap him up because obviously he's not done doing work. Do you guys have anything to add? I mean, I, I think we've touched on everything while we've talked about everything else, really. Um, Yeah, we, I think we really have. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and try and watch the show. Um, I, I think because I know when this show first came out, Reddit, who Bill Nye is a big part of, like he does AMAs a couple times a year. Like his Reddit name is Sundial Bill. So he <laughs> he's he's all in on it and he has he answers all these questions. So when the show came out, Reddit was really upset because they didn't know who the audience was. They felt like they were being alienated things like that, which I can f- totally, totally valid. But I think they should also finish watching it because a lot of them didn't finish watching it. Uh, uh, OK. And I think. They, why they should watch it is for a lot of reasons you mentioned because it's still Bill Nye. Like you still got to finish it because it's Bill Nye. You know, there's got to be something in there that they can take away from. So, love Bill Nye. Love what he's doing. I love what he's done. I hope he keeps doing it. Um, maybe do go back to do more science stuff. <laughs> well, How about you, Matt? Uh, I mean, obviously, I enjoy Bill Nye. I enjoyed the show. Uh, what was one of your favorite episodes one of my favorite episodes yeah uh i like the anti-vaccine episode mainly because i've been saying for years about seatbelts <laughs> and how they're mandatory because they save lives and they're not a choice but yet when it comes to vaccines apparently that's supposed to be a choice <laughs> like i just don't get how we allow things that are supposed to be public safety to save people but yet on the other spectrum we allow people to have their choice that can be very detrimental and be even worse than car crashes. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I think I've heard you make that argument before, and I, I watched the series before he did, and I was like, oh wait, I think Matt's really gonna like this episode, so I like wrote it down for one of for one of those two to watch. Um, I mean, I think my favorites. I really like the GMO episode. I really liked the overpopulation episode, just because it's kind of like if we educate women. Women are smarter at family planning, and that's not as many people that are born, and the people that are born are uh, taking better, well taken care of, and a lot of that happens because when a woman's educated, she tends to have children later on in life, and it, like, it helps create a better cycle, I guess, and then on top of that, like he also mentions that old people are living to be older, and now some countries have uh, more old people than they do young people. And so there's actually not an infrastructure built in to help that many people who can't work or fend for themselves because of their age. Um, so I think the way he deal, he, I think he deals with things on multiple levels during the show. And I'm really excited for you to watch it, Adrian, because it does get progressively better. Like, I think that first night we talked about doing the Bill and I episode, I think all of us watched a couple of episodes. We were like, mm, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think as long as it gets away from you know the overly cringy jokes, and not that like not that like cringy because it's Bill Nye, just because I think the production quality of the show has a lot to do with it too. Like, 
the laugh. I feel like I'm for a lot of the times I feel like I'm watching like a dumbed down version of Penn and Teller, uh, oh. basically with like a okay. uh, Big Bang Theory laugh track, basically for a lot of it. Okay, you know, and as I long as they that. get back to like the the, the panels being productive. Because I did like the GMO episode, but it, basically everything else I've seen was like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, just get to the get to the important stuff. So, I don't so, know if you get to touch on it. Sorry for interrupting. But did you did you enjoy who he selected for the panels overall? or, or um, Just for that GMO. Well, only for that GMO episode I saw. Because that was the one where I saw that was, like, the most diverse. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the other ones, it just seemed like the, he just picked people who were going to basically agree with what he said, almost. It didn't seem like, like I said, like there's not a whole lot of debate. It's people just saying, "Yeah, this this is, this stuff is legit," which is, <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess okay, but why do the panel if you're just gonna agree with what he's saying? Uh, like he could just he could just Bill Nye could just tell me what they're gonna tell me in the panel. I don't really get anything oh, so extra from like, that. Okay, so it's kind of like why doesn't he just do like a longer education state? Like, exactly. Segment. Like why is the panel okay. thing? Like, if you're not gonna debate, don't do a panel. Just do more. You know, ed- education, even if it's like, was it e- entertainment occasion, whatever the ed- education, e- whatever the education and entertainment thing is together. It's couple just do names. more of that instead of just doing a panel where people are just going to agree with you for 15 minutes of your show. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I just I just know some of the panels I I enjoy just because, like I said, they, between the various backgrounds, they brought different views, even though they were agreeing. They kind of agreed from like hey, different perspectives. I'm from here. I totally agree with this. In fact, that he's, you know, said we said earlier he's not an expert in every field, so he got one to say I'm not stupid. They actually experts in the field agree with me. <laughs> yeah. come back me up. I'm super excited to see what Will Wheaton agree with. That and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was two. That and I just some of the topics I just don't think you can bring people into debate. I just don't think they deserve a spot at this table. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I think it would have been, although having a climate denier and a cli- and and climate change people on the same panel would have been entertaining. I I, I also don't so. know if they would have. Ag- I also don't know if they would have agreed to do the show though. Like I think I think too like, I think we're putting a lot of the focus on oh he got people who agree with him, but I I. I mean, because he debated somebody like Ken Ham, like I maybe people wouldn't have agreed to even come on his show. Well, I mean. I don't know. I was kind of with the people of like, why did you bother with Ken Ham? Yeah, that is true. That that was another Ken, critique. That was more of a waste of money yeah, to go so, debate that. So like, there's, I think actually a good other side to this too, and it's a but why though with, um, with Bill Nye is he tends to walk forward and meet people at different points in their understanding of science as opposed to just cutting them off and saying, well, you you have a belief in this. You're never going to turn to my point of view and leaving them. I think Bill Nye, because he has such faith in people, he tries to meet them where they're at and talk to them and he tries to persuade them or maybe tries to persuade the audience that those people have. So I guess it is kind of weird that he didn't have other people on the panel. I totally agree with you, Matt. I don't think some of them should be on the panels because like there's enough of that in a lot of our other media but it is kind of weird because just because of how open bill nye is to taking questions because it's another thing too like bill nye has made himself extremely accessible to the public he answers questions on twitter all the time he's very interactive like you said adrian on reddit he's completely open to things um so that is kind of a little weird um now that i think about it i hadn't thought about it that way actually um but yeah i mean that's not to take away from anything like that he's doing like i i appreciate what he's doing i can see his vision for it i just wish it would have been handled a little bit differently where it's more sciencey and like education than it is kind of like debate and things like that because i think you can do the science stuff and make it politically sound without Mm -hmm. you know ranting for 15 minutes this is true. Yeah, I mean, I don't like ranting either, but I guess just as a person who's been in science, there comes a point where you can only give people so many facts. You can only try to teach them and educate them so many times. Yeah, but those people probably aren't going to watch Bill Nye anyway. So that is very. That's my point. Like the point. audience I mean, is just weird. The odd. I don't yeah, really yeah, like yeah, the audiences. Said, I think it's who are you ranting to, Bill? Thing. Like I said, yeah, for me, I enjoyed. I agree with you, Bill. Don't yell at me. I'm sorry. I drive an electric car, Bill. It's not my fault. 
I also want to point out um, that Tyler, the creator, did the opening theme song and all of the music. I like Tyler, the creator, so I can't be mad at that one. Can't be mad at that, (laughs) even though he did start a riot when we were at South by one year. He did. He did. That did happen. Hey, Um, Tyler, come on our show. (laughs) I'll let you start a riot. (laughs) Um, but I think one of the cool things to take away from this is we got more Bill Nye in our lives, guys. And I think that we should be happy about that. Um, because he's no longer just doing Kickstarters and viral videos trying to teach you about race and poverty and why climate change matters. But he's now on our Netflix streaming services and y'all can go watch that. Um, I do want to go ahead and we did get a person comment on about why he thinks Bill Nye matters and why this show in particular matters. And he's Brandon Garcia. And he says, even though he's a cheesy guy, his activism and his show are vital if science is to survive in the era of Trump and alternative facts. I like that it's a scientific show, but it includes political satire, kind of like The Daily Show, to help in- entertain viewers while still being informative. Hopefully, by keeping the viewers engaged like this, he'll be able to convince everyone that science is truth, non-biased, and make climate change a national priority. Um, So that was from uh, one of our listeners, and I think that's a pretty fair assessment of what I think he was trying to do with the show. Like you said earlier, Matt, like, get people to do stuff. We don't have an electric car. Adrian has an electric car. Wow. Y'all, you hate Earth. We do only have one car. You hate Earth. Our carbon emissions are cut in half. And by the way, everything I said about Steve Aoki, keep producing music. It's great to run to. <laughs> so I want to close out the show with some of, I, I really want to do this because we usually cut off the fun facts, but these Bill Nye ones are so great. Um, so Bill Nye got into comedy. Wow. So I have nine fun facts from Bill Nye. Um, and this is from I Fucking Love Science. I know I'm not supposed to cuss, but it's in the title. Um, and I'm going to include them in the show notes. And the first one is how Nye got into comedy. Whilst working as an engineer for Boeing, Nye entered and won a Steve Martin lookalike contest in Seattle, kickstarting his comedic journey. From then, he continued to work on 747s by day and as a, a 747s. Oh, yeah. I can't believe I it's just said that. I know it's a type of plane, Matt. I realize this now. Ace, I guess you can leave that in. 7.7 by day and as a stand-up comedian at night until he submitted enough jokes to Almost Live to earn him a place on the show. This is where he developed the character of the science guy. Um, also, his mom was a Nazi codebreaker. His mother, Jacqueline Nye, was so adept at math and science that she was recruited to become a Navy cryptographer during World War II, working to crack the infamous Nazi Enigma code. She also has a PhD. Um, So actually, and so does his father. And so he's like the underachiever of the family because he only has a bachelor's in engineering. (laughs) Um, So his father was actually a prisoner of war. So Bill's fa- uh, father, Edwin Ned Darby Nye, spent a significant amount of time as a prisoner in a Japanese camp during the Second World War, during which he built sundials out of fence posts and pebbles in an attempt to stay sane. And that leads into the other fun fact is that's why Adrian has said that he's obsessed with sundials. Nye consequently inherited his passion for sundials from his father, eventually leading him to persuade NASA to equip the Spirit and Opportunity Mars rovers with his team's Mars dials. These devices, consisting of sundials encircled by gray rings, were designed not only for timekeeping, but also for photometric calibration. And Matt probably knows what that is. I do not. Hmm? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> what? Oh, photometric calibration. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> You're not an engineer? No. <laughs> also, Bill and I wants to change the world. Uh, okay, so that's not news, but did you know that he typed out rules for Bill Nye the Science Guy show? The top line read, Objective, Change the World. Jason Susberg, one of the directors of the upcoming Nye, uh, Nye movie, told IFS, IFL Science that in fact every script that included that it, every script then included that same line, which was of course the ultimate goal of the show. He was also taught by Carl Sagan uh, when he was at Cornell, and if you don't know who Carl Sagan is, 
you should know because he's kind of the reason we have popular scholars today, at least in the field of science. Uh, he did the first Cosmos. Um, also, Bill is an inventor. He owns a patent for an educational device that magnifies objects simply by filling a clear plastic bag with water. And slightly more randomly, he is also a patent holder for a more comfortable ballet slipper called the Ballet Point Shoe. <laughs> uh, finally, Bill thinks you can learn a lot from these three things. Bill believes that you can learn everything about the human species or even the meaning of life from these three things. Sp Shakespeare, baseball, and Star Trek. So... I don't know about you guys, but when I read those, I kind of have an even bigger appreciation for Bill Nye. Star Wars over Star Trek. <laughs> Bears beat Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, or second, or tenth. I don't know how many memes they've made of that. Don't know. <laughs> he does have a lot of great memes, too. We... Oh, yeah, Bill Nye does have he a lot of very, great he memes. He was very meme. He memed? Yes, he memed. <laughs> also weird fact that i guess i don't know he did he also disappeared apparently for like 10 years what well no because you basically from after 2006 all the way to the show he was obviously in the public figure but he really didn't do much no i think make that's you little youtube videos yeah like that it, i don't think he disappeared he just did more of the public scholar stuff yeah. he did all the viral stuff okay and he did write books Fair enough. he wrote books he didn't disappear anyways in the show it's, yeah, it's late at night. Okay, guys, I think that was a great Bill Nye episode. Let us know what you think. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. And as always, you can find us at But Why Though PC on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, as well as on twitch.tv slash But Why Though PC. We will be streaming more often on that. You can find me personally at Oh My Myth Randier on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Adrian? You can find me on Twitter at SuperReese93, S-U-P-E-R-R-U-I-Z 93. And Matt. First, I want to state that much as I love Bill Nye, Brian Cox will always be number one in my heart. <laughs> and two, you can find me at, on Twitter at <laughs> Brian M Cox fanboy. Yes. <laughs> Dat M18, D-A-T-T-M18. Everybody, thanks for listening. And uh, science! No, that wasn't good. No. Blow it out. I can't do that. Blow we it have up. neighbors. Blow it up. <laughs> no. Oh wait, here we go. Let's go and save the world. That's his new thing. Asa cut all this out. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>